Hey everybody, welcome back to my Star Wars channel and today we're gonna do another book review. We would be honored if you would join us. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me here at my Star Wars channel. And that's exactly what this is. It's my Star Wars channel. It's the place where I look at how Star Wars interacts with my life. And it could be uh, vintage toys, doing reviews for that. Uh, could be for my hero, Boba Fett. Uh, and lately I've been doing reviews for the vintage books. And the reason why is because uh, the new movies came out and as they started coming out, uh, a lot of the old timers, like myself, started complaining and saying, why are we writing new stories? Why are all these new stories? And we have tons of old stories that we always wanted to see turned into films. And so I thought, let's put that to the test, all right? I'm gonna read all the vintage books in order and then review them and then ask questions like, do these hold up? Are they still canon? And would I wanna see this made into a movie? I'll get into all those at the end of this, but first we're gonna look at the second book from the Bounty Hunter Wars, this is Slave Ship. This is Slave Ship from Bounty Hunter Wars. It's number two from K.W. Jeter. This is a Bantam Spectra book. It's 321 pages. Uh, the last book, if you saw my review, was a very confusing book. This one, more confusing story just like last time. And again, no reason for the title. No reason for the title. I don't know why that's called Slave Ship. I think it's just to draw you in but really doesn't focus on the slave one at all. Second thing I wanna say is, why did I even bother reading the first book? Because uh, the author spends 100 pages of this book recapping the last book. Really, 100 pages. Uh, this author is very wordy, very wordy, very monologue-y. Uh, I didn't, as a, as, a, as a person who read the last book, I didn't need a hundred pages of backstory that I had already read. Now, I guess it's nice for someone that didn't read the first book, but as someone who did read the first book, I didn't need it. But even with that recap, this book is still a hot mess. If you walk up to me on the street and ask me to recap this book for you and tell you, uh, you know, summarize it, I would just stare at you with a blank expression because I, I wouldn't know how. I would almost forget pages as fast as I read them. That's how unmemorable this book was. This is a story still about the tension between the Bounty Hunter Guild and how uh, Kudar Muab is playing both sides of it, but he literally just only talks about it, never does anything about it. In the past, this book takes place uh, in two different times, in the past and in the present. So in the past, uh, Boba Fett is trying to destroy the remains of the Bounty Hunters Guild from the inside. In the present, Boba Fett, Dengar, and a girl named Neela are on Tatooine. They end up leaving Tatooine to get away from Bosk. Uh, he was setting a trap for them, but they escape. Uh, we learn a little bit more about Neela because she was really uh, kind of ambivalent, kind of strange in the first book. We didn't really know who she was. She said she was a dancer in Jabba's palace, but you didn't get more uh, exposure about who she was. In this book, you learn more about who she is, uh, and apparently uh, most of that happened during uh, the Quat of Quat chapters, but we know that her real name is Katil. Spoiler alert. Uh, she's from a noble house. She's kind of like a princess, and her sister, Kodir, is actually looking for her, but we don't know why. Uh, in this book, Bosk is still uh, a moron. Uh, Shizor is still scheming against the Bounty Hunter Guild, trying to destroy it. Uh, none of the characters in this book feel like Star Wars characters. It doesn't feel like the author knows who these characters are, doesn't know who Bosk is, doesn't know who Boba Fett is. I feel like they're just, they're just names to the author and they just do the things that, that he wants them to do. Uh, so I didn't ever feel like I was drawn into the Star Wars universe with this book. Uh, Boba Fett, for instance, has a reputation of being the strong silent type, right? He doesn't talk a lot. He's very like stoic and a, a mystery behind the mask. But in this book, he won't shut up. He talks and talks and talks and talks for pages. And for a Star Wars fan who wants action, who wants lightsaber battles, and who wants, uh, you know, uh, laser gun fights and escapes and chases and ATSTs and I want all that stuff, explosions. There's lots of dialogue in this just for pages and pages and pages. Uh, negatives, yeah, not so much action and a lot of dialogue. So in a series, 
that I think a lot of people were excited for back in the 90s that said, we're going to resurrect Boba Fett, your favorite character. We're going to bring him back to life. I can see why a lot of people would have rushed out and bought this trilogy because it gives a story to a character that back then we didn't know that much about. And uh, people were upset that he had died. They wanted him to come back. So kudos, right, to the publishing house and to the author for bringing him back. I'm sure that made books sell and fly off the shelf. But... Um, I, I think now that we have The Mandalorian, you really do see how that could have been brought back successfully and done in uh, a Star Wars style. Whereas this, I just feel like, was a book that had Star Wars characters as names only, but it just didn't feel very Star wars E, at least in my opinion. All right, so a couple questions that we always ask. And the first one is, is this book still canon? Uh, the answer is no, right? Because uh, so many things have happened since this book was written. Not only that, but Mandalorian changed uh, all of Boba Fett's lore. And so the, the series, Mandalorian series, is canon now. Uh, plus there's some Boba Fett stuff mentioned in some of the cartoons too. So I think that changes uh, what was in this book. So no, not canon. Would I turn this book into a movie? Absolutely not. Uh, I don't... I don't think it would hold up as a movie at all. There's, well, because there's no action in it, so it doesn't come across as an action film. And third, uh, does this hold up now in 2021 as it did when it was written back in the 90s? I would still have to say no. I don't think these books uh, hold up today. I know we've read the books in the past. We had fond memories of them. We remember them. And we're like, oh yeah, I remember Bounty Hunter Wars. Uh, and we, you know, we have fond memories of them and it looks nice on our shelf. But uh, as a 2021 reader, and as a Star Wars fan, I had to labor through this book, labor through it. I couldn't wait for it to end. So um, I promised, <laughs> I promised to review all the books. So I have to read book three, not looking forward to it, but I'm hoping that it resolves all my questions because I still have a ton of questions. So let's all cross our fingers and hope that book three is better. Maybe you have already read book three and you already know how this is all going to end and I don't and you're just sitting there with arms crossed and you're laughing at me. Did you read this book? Uh, do, you, do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? You probably disagree, right? You disagree. You love these books. Tell me how much you love these books down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, guys. May the force be with you. I'll see you next time.